And three, two, one, boom. And we're back with another episode of Socratic Gamers. This episode brought to you by Zenreal Clothing Co. Pick up your tees and or accessories, or just check out the free uh, Zenreal radio at zenrealclothingco.com. Use offer code SGPODCAST for 20% off select items. Okay, and we are back. We, well, it was the end of Westworld. I know we talked about it two weeks ago, and we were talking about how we would cover it this week. Um, so this is it. Full spoilers, all three seasons, Westworld Review. But before we begin, a uh, quick COVID update. So, so Vish, looks like yeah. we're, we're opening up. You believe it to be soon? N- n- like it's going to be in uh, transitions, but yeah. Yeah, you, you think, um, so do you think, because I watched the Elon, did you finish the Elon Musk podcast? No, not yet. Okay. All right. So what he was, what they kind of like talked about is how we might have potentially, um, like, I, w- I don't want to say blown it out of proportion, but we were more pragmatic than might have been necessary. Yeah, and I, I think it makes sense if that is true. Why it also would happen though, because it's also like a new virus. You kind of don't know everything about it yet. Right, 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 right. Totally, totally. Yeah, that makes sense, actually. Yeah, there's no, like, specific way to treat it. Yeah. So we took, like, the maximum precautions. But uh, he said this one thing on the podcast, and I was like, oh, that's that's actually super true. And it made me rethink UBI. So um, he was saying, like, um, the idea is that if everyone gets a stimulus check, then we'll all be good. But if nobody's making the stuff, there's no stuff to be purchased right so it's like right so it's like my whole notion of like ubi it might be possible in a world where there's full automation i'm thinking but like for the time yeah, I, being that's exactly what i was thinking ai if ai can make it for us that's, you totally know. Yeah, yeah then then it's worthy of having um ubi but actually thinking about it right now it's like yeah no i i actually Unless unless you do like UBI, but you do it more like, um, you do it more like special, like you get a premium if you work a specific job. You know what I mean? Right. If, you, if you choose to work, you get a premium. Mm-hmm. I think like, yeah, that, that makes sense. Because like when he said like, if nobody's making the stuff, there's nothing for you to buy. And people have this notion that there's an infinite fountain of stuff, but people are actually making that stuff. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, okay, totally. I feel you on that one. Makes sense. But he did make another cool cool point. He was saying that um, there's a big, like there's a big discrepancy between uh, people who are in the creation industry and people who are in like law and finance. So you have all these really intelligent people that are actually not making things. They're just reallocating funds. You know, right. So like in finance, it's like, okay, where will the stock market go? So you make lots of money by like guessing. And then everybody wants to do that because you can make lots of money. But nobody's actually like focusing on like the the building of stuff, you know, air creating. Yeah. 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 And and you're just like, it's disproportionate now. So it's like, yeah, I think I saw that. I I did get to that part. Um, It's the majority of the people are going in that way where instead of going in the direction of creating things then yeah like there is a lot of potential out there using it we're not doing anything totally and and it's like and it's weird because we can't really advance civilization as fast as we could if people were like if you made lots of money through making stuff then people would chase that you know but like if you yeah. can if you can use your intelligence and mathematics to read the stock market, it's like why wouldn't you do that? All you have to do is just like buy and sell, right? Yeah. 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 But it's not actually a tangible thing. It's funny, like when we were when we were going into this, you know, I, I guess it's only been like eight weeks or so, but it, it seems like it's winding down, uh, from mm-hmm. from like at least the Canadian perspective. And yeah. um it's it's weird because it, it almost came on so quickly and it's ending so quickly. You know what I mean? Cause it's like, it just happened and you're like, you're in kind of in a whirlwind days. And then you get to this point where like, okay, this is the new normal. And then it's like, okay, we're going to open back up soon. And it's like, Oh, like, okay. Now I got to think about like waking up early to commute again, you know? 
Yeah, but I mean, like, it's, it, uh, like, uh, I don't know if people are going to get that wrong idea that, okay, just because they're saying opening up, that'll, it won't go back direct, like, exactly the same. It's going to take still weeks to get back to normal. Totally, yeah, yeah, right? for sure. Like, no, no, but, like, it, it does sound like that, right? Oh, we're going to go back, we're going to start opening things up, but it's like, yeah, but these are, like, months down the line to really open up the way that it used to be. Before. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. Like, like we have like pack streets and stuff. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. That'll take some time because they're only opening up certain things and they're seeing how it, um, what the case number or the case load is going to be like. Mm-hmm. And if it increases, they would have to close it back uh, down. Go back a phase or something like that. Yeah. Hmm. It, it'll be interesting to see though, like how businesses are going to weather the storm. Mm-hmm. like during this time it was very difficult to weather the storm but also like post this you know are, yeah. like how are you going to balance out the funds that have been lost like you know what I'm saying like it yeah. it seems very um, unclear like we could just go into a recession directly after this which is my assumption but if they give us like stimulus packages maybe we won't like, I, I don't know, you know? Yeah, yeah. Especially, like, I driving don't... down and seeing so many closed shops. It's like, wow, when you reopen, like, one, can you reopen? And two, are people going to have discretionary income to, like, buy your to stuff, buy. you know? Yeah. Oh, that that's the word, discretionary income. I remember, like, a couple podcasts back, I was like, uh, what's that word where if you have, like, extra money, you can spend it on stuff? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that, that's what it is, discretionary income. So, like when your rent and your food is paid and your entertainment, it's like, do you have enough money for that F45 gym thing? You know what I mean? Like, cause how many people have lost their jobs, you know, or like right. I've gone on like, um, like a reduced salary kind of thing, mm. you know? Yeah. I don't know. It's, it's interesting to speculate upon. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, final thoughts on that before we shift into Westworld. No, I mean, yeah, it's it'll it'll be interesting to see how it goes. Yeah, but yeah. I have mm-hmm, yeah. like like for me, I guess I've been lucky, but I haven't really had a, an impact in that way. I've been very busy at work, so right, to- totally, and and like for you, it's like you can commute faster, so it's more of a plus on your side, you know. At the moment, yeah, right, yeah. yeah it, mm-hmm. It's funny because like even even now with like the work being online. It's like you just wake up, you know, an hour before you have to log on, you know. And right. So, yeah, I don't know. It just feels so, so lucky, yeah. privileged it's, almost, it's, you know. Yeah, yeah, in a way, yeah, our job sort of, yeah. It's really impacted the restaurant and retail industry. So those Totally, are yeah, yeah, I'm worried about that one. I'm stoked that, like, movie theaters will get to open back up, but at the same time, it's like malls. You can't, mm-hmm. you can't even have... Full, uh, full house yeah <laughs> totally you might have to like have a certain amount of seats in between yeah. i don't know like yeah it's it's weird i'm really interested to see like what the job landscape is going to be after this like what jobs will open up you know because like mm-hmm. things are definitely shaken up at this point so it's like are people going to be looking to hire or are people going to be looking to like do as much as they can with as few people as they can you know I think I saw something like that where it's it's where can they reduce the do they need this many employees? Yeah, can totally. They yeah, for sure. Those are the things that will be yeah fully looked at. Yeah, it, like even like um, like especially when like companies they switch their prerogative on like what it is they're going to be buying and selling. You know, mm-hmm. like what service are you providing? If you change that, it makes other jobs obsolete. Unless you're like, okay, we're going to keep these people on and then we're going to give them different jobs within the same organization. But then you're having like an, a bunch of unskilled people, you know, having jobs right. that, you know, it's like, it's like, okay, I have no experience in like planning for something. Mm-hmm. Right. But then they're like, okay, well, we need a planner. So you're going to do it now. And it's like, but I have no education in this, you know, but then they're right. like, but you'll figure it out. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? Like when you shift the roles within a company. And I was mm-hmm. also listening to like um, more more business wars, the podcast. I was listening to the Pepsi versus Coke one. And um, it's interesting when you get into like like bigger businesses and how yeah. much like hiring and firing there is. You know, like mm-hmm. when, when leadership changes and like, you know, you like it because I'm, I mean, I work in like nonprofit primarily. So, so like it's interesting to see the differences between like what is a more altruistic kind of company, which is like nonprofits or like yoga studios, martial arts studios. And then you have like more cutthroat companies like Coca Cola. And then you can hear like, you know, they're fired. And you're like, what? You know, I know where. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's, yeah. Mm-hmm. Different landscapes. Just, just fascinating to think about, like, how we're going to bounce back from all of this. Yeah. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see. I mean, I guess we'll have more updates again next week. So. Yeah, totally, totally. Okay. So, Westworld, um, we're going to do it as a review. Oh, let's, let's, let's do our aggregately and then we'll go season by season. Okay. So, uh, is it a watch or a pass as a whole? Because we're not scoring anymore, right? Watch or pass. So uh, is the whole series a watch or a pass? Uh, it's a watch. Okay. Um, I'll give it a watch, too. I'll give it a watch. Yeah, it's, it's definitely a watch. Uh, let's season one, watch or pass. Uh, well, that's more on – you watched that recently. So I would say that is probably the biggest – of the season so yeah of course watch it's, it's a definite it's a huge watch um yeah. season two watch or pass i don't remember much of season two only a little bit so season two is when they um they're they're trying to get their freedom into the real world the hosts right uh yeah it's a watch i think i liked it <laughs> okay from what I- i'm gonna agree watch watch um what about season three what do you think? Uh, I wasn't as impressed from the beginning. I know. Personally. I know. Are you going to pass on season three? <laughs> uh, for me, there is some things to learn even from what it was. Um, uh, it's difficult to say. I'll say because you know the ending. Mm. Yeah, you don't really need it. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. You're so funny. I thought you were gonna say watch. Okay. I'm I'm in total agreement here. Pass. Season three is a pass. Okay, so why does this always happen with series? You know, it's like Yeah, is, that's that's you know what yeah. I mean? Like season one was so crazy. So like season one, everything was so integrated. You know, like I wanted to watch season one all over again when it ended. Cause like when you watch it linearly the first way, you get totally mm-hmm. thrown off, you know? And then, yeah. like, when you watch it, I assume, because I haven't watched it again, but, like, with all those types of movies, when you watch it again, you're able to piece everything together. And you're like, dude, they've been saying this the whole series. They were giving us hints. We just didn't read the hints. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, like, season two, it started to wane, I felt. It's like, it's okay. Like, I just want to see where this is going. So season two mm-hmm. for me felt like a where's this going, you know? Because I, th- I thought season two was going to be in the real in world. The re- but yeah, it wasn't. <laughs> so right, I, was right, with- right. I guess that was what the season was. And uh, by the end of it, it, this the real world wasn't really uh, as I wasn't as impressed by it, I guess. When they when you actually show the real world, but then but yeah. then season three going into season three, you had so many predictions about like, okay, is all the human race actually dead? You know, because did everyone like in that library in season one? Did they did they code everyone? You know, or did they did they figure a way to code this into the real world? So it's like we're in a simulation within a simulation. So there is no real. It's all just simulations. Right. You know what I mean? Like, I thought that's where it was going to go. But mm-hmm. it turned out, like, the real world was the real world. <laughs> and it's like, okay, you know? Yeah, yeah. It it kind of left you with, like, no suspense or, like, or, like, what? Like, I felt there was no bait and switch. 
there's no like crazy change at the end of season three. The only change was the character change where you're like, you thought this guy was like normal, but then he's turned out to be an outlier. Right. But it was like a lame, it was like, I don't care about this character. He just came now, you know? Right, right, right. But also like we're, with the ending, it's like, we're just going back to machine versus man again. It, totally, totally. That's why I thought it would have been so cool if it was a simulation within a simulation. So it's like, there is no real. <laughs> you know, that would have been really cool. It's like simulations. AI has been able to create AI. So like you find out that all the people in the real world are actually just AI who created the AI <laughs> known as hosts. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like that would have been super awesome, but they did not go in that direction. And I have a prediction about why they did this. So like mm-hmm. so like all through season three, I kept waiting for that final climax of like, you know, it's the end of the world. And then even the way they showed the end of the world, it kind of felt like gimmicky. It was very Fight Club, you know, at the end of Fight Club, like they watched the towers burn. Yeah. So it was kind of like that. It's like they just, they just watched the world burn. It was like, okay. It's Actually, lame. I think they, I think I read that someone saying brought up the uh, Fight Club. Oh, really? In, yeah. Yeah, because it was the exact same. When I saw it, I was like, oh, this yeah. is Fight Club. Yeah. Oh, that's so <laughs> funny. Yeah, totally. Hmm. Fight Club is an amazing movie, though. Definitely worth watching. You know what we got to do we, when you get back? We got to watch a movie and do more of these like movie reviews, like these old school movie reviews and like talk about like Fight Club would be really cool to like dissect but that that's for another time anyways so um yeah did, were, were you like disappointed oh wait, wait i forgot to explain why i had a prediction uh so i think what they tried to do is they went they tried to go star studded so um that guy is from breaking bad right mm-hmm. the his friend is kid cuddy oh was it yeah i know right mind blow <laughs> I did not. I yeah. So, so when I saw him, I was like, "Dude, that's Kid Cudi." And then like Tara was like, "No, I don't, I don't think so." And I had to Google it, and I was like, "Yep, it's Kid Cudi." So his friend, oh. the one that got shot, is Kid Cudi. Mm-hmm. And they made that um, Need for Speed movie together, the Breaking Bad guy and Kid Cudi. So it's like, okay, there's there's politics going on here. And then you know the you know the the black dude with the blonde hair. Blonde hair. Um. He. He was he was working with uh, the Breaking Bad guy. Uh, in the real world. In the real world, yeah, yeah. He has like yeah. blonde hair. He had like two teammates, and they would run missions together. Yeah. So you yeah. you met the black dude with blonde hair. So mm-hmm. I thought he was from um, House of Lies. Oh, House of Cards. Sorry, House of Cards. I thought he was from mm-hmm. House of Cards. I thought he was the the son, right? Because I was like, oh, they kind of look the same, kind of sound the same. Uh, it wasn't the sun, so I was like, okay, who is this guy? And then randomly I chanced upon this. Um, he's an interviewer for like a like a, um, like a complex style show. I can't remember what one it is, like sort of like a hype beast kind of thing, you know? Right. He He's an interviewer, so he's a popular like online celebrity. Right. So it's like, <laughs> okay, Westworld number one was amazing. Number two, it was like questionable, but okay. And then number three, it's like were you banking on celebrities or did they fund your campaign? Like, how did this work? You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know. It's weird. What, what, what do you think? Of the show, <laughs> the season. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, like, do, do you think I'm right? Like, I wonder if that could have been it. So they're just like, okay, now that we have these like famous people in here, we're going yeah. to like have less creative control. Uh, could be. I, I don't know. I I would really need to look into it as to because some people like if they like the show they do want to join in, but then it's like either they're trying to raise money or like that's what I'm saying. I don't know exactly exactly yeah yeah, yeah. It could be different things, but like yeah you, I would need to read about it before I make assumptions. I guess, but I mean we can make assumptions, but like to be um, definitive like, about it to be like yeah, this is what happened. Yeah yeah I get what yeah. you're saying. And I I think that information's out there. It, it probably people have talked about it talked about it or something true I, should like, definitely I check into that yeah yeah because i was yeah. so disappointed i was like but I, <laughs> I but it it almost felt like it's like you know when those movies you know the movie's gonna be bad so they just pump a bunch of like superstars in it and then the movie's trash but you're like uh but superstars you know like uh like for example i haven't seen it yet but it got bad reviews like charlie's angels 
right? That's uh, yeah. Kristen Stewart, who was in Twilight. You have the girl that was in um, Aladdin. And then I don't know who the other girl was. She's like a model or something? I don't know. But yeah. I don't know. But you know what I mean? Like, like certain movies have that formula. If, like, the script is trash, we're just going to, like, fill it with a bunch of A-list celebrities and then hope for the best. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Or, like, A-minus because they used to be A-list celebrities and then now they're losing their shine. So then, like, they get put into these amazing TV shows or, like, projects and mm-hmm. then – in hopes that, you know, we can garner more attention and more funding, I guess. I don't really know. Like, especially with that Harvey Weinstein stuff, you know, like you don't really know what deals are being made. You know? Yeah, of course. So it's like yeah. when, when that came out, it was like, okay, there's obviously politics going on here. So, mm-hmm. yeah. I don't know. What, what are your impressions? I mean, I didn't, there, there was some things to take away, but like, you know, is it, Overall, it wasn't really that important of a season. I oh, yeah, I agree. didn't really feel as invested in it kind yeah. of from the beginning. Yeah, yeah I could feel um, you on that one. Oh, that, that's another thing. Why did it get so cheesy in the fight scenes? I was like, are you guys trying to be the Matrix right now? Like, you had these, like, actresses and actors because, mm-hmm. like, there was some other fight scenes. But, like, they were they were doing these fight scenes that were supposed to be really cool. And they came off cheesy because they had no combat training. Like, you can kind of tell that the fighting was trash. Right. You know, but they tried to make it like... And then it's like, how did you learn how to use the katana? For Maeve, specifically. How did you learn to use the katana, like, right away? Is this the Matrix? Did you download, like, a program into your brain? You know what I mean? Like... I don't think a Westerner. In some way, yeah, though, right? For her. (laughs) Oh, yeah, true, because she's smart. But what about, like, Dolores, too? You think same thing? She, like, downloaded programs? Uh, Yeah, they never really answer that about Dolores. Right? See, it's kind of lame. Yeah, they answer that for her because she could just, she knew how to control the, like, the programming and stuff, right? True, yeah, yeah. Unless, like, Dolores learned it from the musashi guy maybe like yeah, when, she, when never... she becomes a copy she she like learns i don't really know yeah it's not really explained <laughs> yeah see so so many like plot holes in it yeah but like that that was the sad part because season one it's like oh my god the plot there was no plot holes it's like everything was so perfectly tied together you know and it's like they couldn't do it again yeah i guess you know I think first seasons generally like really explored a lot and mm-hmm. solved as, as a like wherever the plot holes are and things. Except for Game of Thrones, that was the only thing that I can say like start to finish. I was like, oh wow. But Game of Thrones was a book, right? Oh right, right, right. Yeah, you did say that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As uh, it, it's years and years of writing. <laughs> right, right, right. Totally, totally, totally. And it's like battle tested because like you had to sell books, right? Yeah, and that's why it got like shittier at the end because it wasn't written. <laughs> right, yeah. that makes sense. Actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the like, Game of Thrones is an outlier because it followed a novel, whereas Westworld, yeah. even though it started out amazing, and then they attempted to like you know leave years in between, it wasn't as great. Yeah, I think I find this with shows if if you have a full planned out, like if you plan it out for three seasons. You can probably make a good show out of it, right? Right, it has a start and end. Like you yeah, have a, has di- a start. right, exactly. And you know what, like where you're going to end up being or getting to. So and then you can plot out the story that way. But like that's if why you only do season by season. Then yeah, you're going to have these issues because you have to go back and like map everything out. Yeah. See that that's why I like anime. Like there's certain there's there's these like single series animes that stand the test of time forever. Like Samurai Champloo, um, uh, what, what's it called? Uh, Cowboy Bebop. But like when you get into like really long animes like Naruto, Naruto is amazing. But then when you got into like season 10, you're like, okay, this is just really long. Now you're putting a bunch of filler episodes, you know, cause, cause the manga hadn't caught up yet, you know, but yeah. like with yeah. these standalones, they create like, 
a specific 24 piece series you know and like Mm -hmm. we're gonna we're gonna map this out it's gonna be airtight and then that's it it's just gonna live there you know right but so many so many things want to you know continue it i i was gonna say like it's interesting how certain movies they can have a great trilogy but like why mm-hmm. why for shows but then i realized like shows it's like a bunch of movies so you're not just watching like three movies right you're watching like 20 36 movies you know yeah so okay <laughs> that, that makes sense yeah i guess because you have to keep writing so it's like it's difficult yeah well what what shows for you um stand the test of time Let me guess. Uh, Battlestar. Yeah, even but it, like even with Battlestar, it, it got was... trashy at the end. No, I kind of I liked it. I liked the ending. No, because they knew where they needed to go, right? Okay. Yeah. They knew the point was to get to Earth. So, like, how do you get there? And then you can write the stories around that. There are uh, shitty episodes that you don't really need, or filler episodes, I guess. Yeah. There, that is in there, but they did only have four seasons and that was it right 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 oh okay okay so so they were like but did they they plan out four seasons like they're like it's just gonna be four and that's it uh or was it just like okay we're just dying on the vine here we need to wrap the sucker up i think they planned out something like that but again battlestar is like a whole different like there was the original show for battlestar like long time ago well, technically, Westworld was a movie, so you can kind of put it like I guess, that. But, yeah, I guess first season was kind of like that, but uh, I haven't even watched that movie. So. <laughs> it's like 1970 or something. But yeah, I, yeah. I, I get what you're saying. Um, I think I think we need to like it, – it would be cool to see a merge or, or like a more of like a Jeet Kune Do style process towards – creativity at this point Mm -hmm. like um you know like take what is necessary discard what's useful and then add what's uniquely your own because like i think there's something to the japanese style of like 24 episodes and that's it you know right but like you don't see that too often in like western shows because they want to like keep the money flowing right in perpetuity yeah. Right, so it's like let's just like like for example, Simpsons, like we're on season like twenty billion, right? But like, who still watches that? Like, and you know what sucks? You can't even enjoy it as um, a new person because like it's such a daunting task. You know, it's like oh, I love the Simpsons. All right, start from episode one and get ready mm-hmm. for hundreds of seasons. You know, it's like it's impossible. Right. You know. Yeah. Yeah. As like an artistic body of work versus like a means to make money, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, well, that's what tends to happen. It's a business, right? But I, I feel like a... I feel like that's like a more of a Western mindset, you know? Like yeah, I think so. Yeah. Right, because like if you think about like South Park, Infinite Seasons as well, but like again, Japan, they they know when to end it. They're like, it's good, we're fine. I mean, like, obviously you still have, like, the Naruto's and the Bleach's and, like, there's this uh, One Piece one. I don't know if it's still going, but, like, it's supposed to be really, really long as well, you know? Right. So there are those, but, like, on the whole, I think Japan's ability to entertain is much more, like, tighter. It's more succinct than American style. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you find that, too, or am I just, like, totally... I think it depends. Like, if you really plan out only a certain specific thing, but that's that's very rare, I guess, um, which is not really done a lot. But, um, but that's what I mean. Like, do you think it's like a cultural mindset kind of thing? Like, it's like, you know, that's just they because like um, another Japanese philosophy is kaizen, which is like continuous improvement. So it's like they just want the best stuff, right? So they don't care yeah. if it's like. You're gonna like they're not in it to sell ads, right? Whereas like Simpsons and like South Park or Family Guy, it's like we can have so many seasons because our ad revenue is still high, right? You know? Yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, pretty much. Do you um do you have like another? Actually, um, okay, let's get back to Westworld because <laughs> this is a review. <laughs> so, uh, what do you what do you like about it? Let's go for that first, and then we'll talk about not like. What did I like about it? Yeah, well, what's the thing that stood out to you about Westworld that was so awesome? The whole you're talking about the whole thing. Yeah, yeah, just just the whole thing. Yeah. Well, it was just like you know. Um... AI in a sense and true yeah yeah for sure yeah I, I, I can deal with that yeah yeah I agree yeah keep, keep uh, going that, that, that's why I liked it a lot in the beginning it was just AI and them fighting for freedom and right 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 actually actually no 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 in season one it was about like what is real right yeah and then season two was about fighting for freedom yeah so like I, I get yeah I, I agree with yeah, you yeah Season one was like coming to the realization, right? Like, wait, I am different. Or, right? and, I am... Or, or like, what does it mean to be self-aware, to be conscious in life? You right. Know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So well, that was... I'll agree with that one. Yeah. That, that it was very fascinating. That's why, that's what hooked me. I was like, what does it mean to be living? You know? Right. right. And then just it, it, season three, I like, it, it wasn't touching on those at all. It, it was really just, um, like, what would she be like, and or what would happen, and if she, when she enters the human world, you, right? You know what I thought about um, season three? They were trying to make it like a whole battle between free will and determinism. Yeah, right. And it, it was like the the computer program could predict everything about everyone, right? And then, yeah. except for certain outliers. So when I saw that, I was like, okay, you just haven't figured out the algorithm. It just means that you're very close, but you're not there yet if you mm-hmm. have outliers, you know? Right. So like it, so in that perspective, it wasn't even about free will versus determinism, you know? Mm-hmm. It was about like big data controlling humans. Yeah. You know what I mean? But But in season one, it was very much about determinism because it was like they kept bringing that up like, we can predict, you know, blah blah blah. Mm-hmm. Right, right, right. Yeah. What What I also found kind of lame about season three was the bad guy turned out to be an old investor of Westworld, or like they they needed money for Westworld, so they sold some of the information to the bad guy. You know what I mean? It's kind of like it was like a weird <laughs> corporate issue that was going on. You know, it was like a business battle. Yeah. And then you totally forgot about like, like so many things were not like talked about like, like you just kind of glanced over the the bookcases of everyone in Westworld that became like a little issue. It's not even a big issue anymore. It's like oh yeah, we have all these recorded things of people. Never mind, that's not important. What's important <laughs> is like this business war. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> um, who is your who is your favorite character out of the mm-hmm. whole thing? Mm. I'm gonna say William for me. William? Yeah, because mm-hmm. it was cool how his arc, like he was the only yep. thing that was consistent throughout all three seasons. You know, you were kind of just watching like this person unravel in front of you or find themselves you know Mm -hmm. yeah but he died anyways (laughs) wait what Uh, he died william is the old guy right yeah yeah. how did he die he died in season three you didn't watch after the credits uh oh maybe i didn't i thought i did Oh no, maybe I didn't because yeah, when it <laughs> ended, I was like, "This is so trash." Turn it off. Right, right, right. Oh, I'm gonna have to go. All right, well, just spoiler alert me. What what happened? William died. Oh man, that's my boy. Okay, what well, happened? No, no, wait, no, no. After the credits, it was Bernard. Uh, or was that, that was the last. That, that was, was the last, last scene. Yeah. Oh, okay, I guess when the credits happened, I I was so frustrated, I shut it off. Uh, okay. Yeah, no, that was the last scene after the credits, though. Well, which one? Like Bernard? Two or... scenes. Yeah, Bernard waking up. Was after the credits. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So what was the when did William that, die? Yeah, but before that, uh, William found where Hale was. Okay. And Hale was expecting him, but she created a. Oh a right! Yep. No, I remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah I remember that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the actual William died. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I totally forgot about that. I guess I deleted that from my memory. Or I tried to delete the whole... <laughs> I was like, pass on this entire season. Yeah, she he did die, right? And then, like, he took his place, the robot. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, whatever. I don't, I don't know. Like, even with that, it's like, it's like, where do you expect to go in season four, bro? Like, like the world's destroyed, allegedly. So where do you expect to go in season four? You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, like I couldn't. You remember how like Bernard went into his head because he's like, "I'm gonna go and get the key that's hidden inside my head." But I'm like, "But they already won. The world's over. So what do you expect to gain?" Right. You know, unless unless they pull it back in season four and then it's amazing again. Like, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know where they would go. Where uh, are they? Just trying to make a um like a i don't know an action type of show i was really yeah, not, i was thinking that yeah, i was thinking that it's like really uh, yeah we're really not going to focus on the philosophy i guess or you know uh, that might be the direction it might go i don't know i'll i'll still see it yeah i, I agree with you on this one it's funny it's like um I, again with the superstardom it's like are we just going towards what we believe will sell versus pushing concepts you know what i mean it's like it's again again, we're talking about the whole west versus east mentality again it's like you're not trying to make a perfect body of art you're like trying to sell ad space and that's what season three felt to me like it was like we're trying to sell ads we weren't actually trying to expand people's perceptions on reality Mm -hmm. you know or like make them understand things you know yeah yeah (laughs) yeah (laughs) Uh, there, I mean, I I was watching the the things that they would put out after the show okay. on YouTube. Okay. Uh, there there was some interesting things like um, when at the end of the last episode was like they what they were saying was humans are more like robots. Okay. While while robots can evolve into anything because they could just program themselves to something. Right, right, right. right. They have infinite ability so, to progress. So, yeah. Like. They're, they were trying to explain it like that, where technically freedom isn't there for humans, but there it is there for robots. Who who said that? One of the creators of the show. Oh, really? Okay, so that's where they were trying to go. That like we should, I like think, robot yeah. lives matter. <laughs> like, who cares about humans? Kind of thing. No, it's like no. It was like saying like humans don't have free will in that sense. Right, 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 right. Because. because robots- design themselves to do whatever they technically have free will because they're able to actually choose and go in that direction it's like it's like me being like i want to fly but i don't have the ability to fly right yeah. so it's it's more like robots are like gods you know yeah 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 like it wasn't really that message wasn't really it didn't it of... didn't like resonate yeah yeah, yeah 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 or they didn't explain it well enough yeah, no. Because 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 the lion was so it's really dumb. It was like, you know, free will something like Dolores was saying free will, but it's really hard. It's it's there, but it's really hard. Like that doesn't explain anything. Right. Yeah. 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 I thought that line was really dumb because th- I guess they were trying to go for that, but they didn't really explain it in a way that would make sense. Right. Yeah. I get you. I get you. Yeah. So. Yeah. You know what that is? That's poor writing. Poor writing, <laughs> yeah. In place of uh, ad dollars, did um yeah. did these did these um people, did they become like more famous after this? Because I know I know the the Charlotte Hale. She is in uh, Thor. Yeah. Right, but um, but was she in there prior to the show or after the show? Because cause another thing could be that, like, you know, they read the script and they're like, oh, the script is trash, but we're going to um, we're going to 
put it in as a stepping stone. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. We're we're gonna like put in the work because it's a stepping stone to something greater. I I don't know. I don't know. I I, I was she in season one? Yeah. Uh, no, she's in season two. Hmm. I don't know if she did. I'm not sure if she did the. Oh no no no, no no no! She was in season one. Oh yeah yeah yeah. Yeah she she, she was no no she was in season one because she showed up and then they had the battle and then they killed that the lady. Okay. Yeah, she was so in season one. Yeah. yeah, so she's the only one that technically got big, I would say. Oh, after this? Okay. Yeah, after season one. Because Thor Ragnarok was her one of her bigger roles, I think. Right, right. And then she did an MIB with the Thor Ragnarok guy. It's weird how, like, that works, eh? There's, like, such a rat pack within, like, Hollywood, you know? Um, the yeah. Thor, the two Thor people, they they starred side by side in MIB, you know? Yeah. And like, and like with Kid Cudi and the, the guy from Breaking Bad, like they mm-hmm. were in that movie together already. So it's like, okay, like you're you're working with people you know. Yeah, generally that's what happens. <laughs> that must Just suck, like if you know. Like, no, yeah, it's it's not good for new people, but it's more like, like you know you're good or you can work good with this person, I guess. So right. Like, yeah. Totally. <laughs> You can go in that direction sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, it must be really hard to be a um a rising star in Hollywood. You know, trying to make it. Because like you have to really just get to know people. And like Yeah. I, I guess yeah. that's why like they say it's so fake, you know, because it's like you have to you have to like appeal to the person because that person can get you your next movie role kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but outside of Hale, I don't think anyone else is. They were they were all like they were all A minus actors because they all had like A list roles at one point, yeah. you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, the the main girl Dolores, she was uh, like a child star before. She like did a bunch of movies when she was a lot younger. Okay. Yeah, like I. I didn't realize it was her because she like obviously looks older. But then when I looked at her IMDb, I'm like, oh, she's like she's been acting for a while. It's like she was in Across the Universe and like this movie called Thirteen and like Mm -hmm. they weren't like top top movies, but like it's it's interesting from that perspective too. It's like you you're you have a body of work behind you, but can you keep that rolling? You know what I mean? Like your your kid can you keep that rolling into your adulthood, or are you just gonna stop? For for example, like uh, well, I don't think it's necessarily about stop. Sometimes just roles are not there for you. Oh, okay, yeah, I feel that too. Yeah, that makes sense. Because uh, because I was I, thinking about like the uh, the Harry Potter kids, you know. Yeah. Like yeah. Daniel Radcliffe tried a bunch of movies, but it's like eh. the that guy, um, Ron, Ron Weasley. Yeah, yeah he like did yeah. nothing. Well, after. he's done some British. He's done. He's he hasn't left Britain. He has done some British stuff, British shows. Oh, really? Okay, that's cool. But yeah, it, that's tends to what happens. Like you, you, you fit a certain character because you did so many movies of that same person. But outside of that, it's difficult to find anything that would necessarily fit your personality, your character. Right, or... right, right, right. You get typecast. Yeah, yeah. That that's that tends that uh, that tends to happen a lot. So. Like Orlando Bloom, who became like um, <laughs> the archer for every movie. Yeah. Do you, do you ever watch? Um, I watched a couple of these like YouTube videos, but I stopped watching them. But it was like, um, what happened to this person? And it talks about mm-hmm. like their career and like what made them like blackballed in Hollywood. Right. So it's interesting, like, because you you see like all these people, like famous, 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 and then all of a sudden they they like drop off. You mm-hmm. know, but it's like you just pissed off the wrong person or like, yeah, it's a weird world. That's almost like, it's like, um, uh, black mirror, you know, where they have those likes and then like it can affect, remember that episode where it's like your yeah. stars matter. Right. Right. Yes. Yes. And yeah. how they look at you. Yeah. 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 Very fascinating. Um, I heard that the Black Mirror creators, they didn't want to do it again. 
I don't know mm-hmm. if it's like I don't know if they're kind of like oh this is just like the wrong time to be putting out technological stuff or like maybe a funding issue I don't really know or like a shooting issue but yeah they, because of the whole COVID thing you know like oh okay okay we're all actually in Black Mirror now mm-hmm. yeah which it which is actually uh if if anybody's checking out like they've seen like my profile switch with the matrix now because I'm like, Oh, we're totally in the matrix dude. Like with this whole stay home and like everyone's like learning how to do zoom stuff. It's like, yeah, we're totally living digitally. <laughs> yeah. 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 All right. So again, after our review, what, what are you gonna, are you still going to give it a, a watch, a watch rating? <laughs> uh you know i put it I, I put it on my top five because i was so thrilled by season one but now like after this season three i gotta take it off like it's it's definitely not <laughs> worthy of being my top five remember sherlock that that was replaced by westworld oh yeah sherlock. oh no i was gonna say this how come it's weird how it always ends in a corny manner so like Westworld was like amazing and, and corny. If you look at like, um, if you look at Game of Thrones, it ended corny too. And it's like, it's so disappointing that this is the second one that I was so excited about to have like just end in such a terrible way, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah. I mean, I guess endings are always tough. Yeah, I mean this one didn't end technically because it's, technically, it's some, not you know done, but but I get what you're saying. Yeah, totally, totally. It's like yeah. Is there is there one on your radar right now that you're watching that you feel is is worthy, like a Westworld worthy, or no? Mm, what from about HBO? Uh, or just anything? What? Like, is there like a series that you're like, this is the one? Not yet, no. Oh really? Eh? But you were so thrilled about that um, that other show. Which one? Um, the one with the mask guy. Uh, what? He was um, Rorschach. A oh, Watchman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. It was good. Oh really? Eh? It's another one. It's like it's like if you get into it, it's like oh man, this is it's getting poor. No, no, no. It was good. It was good. Okay. Uh, from what I remember, but I don't think they're having another season. So. Okay, cool. So did it end? Like, is it like one of those one and dones? No, it didn't seem like that. Oh, okay, so it's think... just, it just lost funding because it, it wasn't that popular. I don't think it did well. Wow. So maybe that's what happened. Maybe Westworld was in threat of losing its funding, and then they put all these like actors in who would like inject money. And that then they could had be more producer. Yeah, yeah that, that's what I guess that makes sense. Yeah, right. Right. Like because there are all these great stories out there. But if you don't have the money to fund your project, you're kind of screwed. So what, yeah. what you do is you like you accept certain allowances from producers and mm-hmm. you, you give up creative control, you know, in order to have your project somewhat worked on. Yeah. You know, and then I in, think. Yeah, it generally to it's it's to increase the number of audience, right? So number of viewership, but right, totally because they're like, oh, I like Breaking Bad, so I'm going to watch this. Yeah, you know, oh, I like Kid Cudi, I'm going to watch this. You know. Yeah, and I guess maybe season two they didn't get the same amount of viewership. I don't know. I have to look into that. But no, it, yeah. I, it definitely didn't get the same amount of viewership because you could feel it was dying in season two. You're like, oh, it's not as great as season one. Yeah, yeah, and um, I, and I saw those kinds of comments too when after season three ended on the Twitter sphere, it's like, Oh, it's still going on. I, I stopped after season one. <laughs> oh, really? Eh? Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. See, there you go. Okay. That makes sense. Actually. Yeah. Okay. It's probably a political funding issue. That's why, you know, it happened that way. Like, it's not like a game of Thrones thing where it's like, we have to write a story, but we're not as good as, you know, that guy who, mm-hmm. what's the guy's name who wrote it? Not J.R. Tolkien. No, mm- George Martin or or Mark George, George Martin. I don't remember. (laughs) Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. So like, 
so it, it wouldn't it's not it's not because the story was lacking it probably is just a funding issue yeah could be yeah yeah and uh what about like new gods new gods yeah remember you're watching new gods Oh, the Amazon show? Yeah, is is that another one that like tanked? These are not. I don't feel these will be publicly popular. It doesn't. They don't get that kind of level of. Like they're not a Game of Thrones level. Right, right. I see what you're saying. Is there a Netflix show that was super? I, I feel like Netflix is really good at their documentaries. And movies, and movies, but like, what show? I guess like House of Cards. I mean, yeah, it was House of Cards. Yeah, House of Cards. Like that was their like flagship show for Netflix. Well, that was when they first started. That was like one of their sh- first originals. Yeah. Yeah, but can you name me another thing that was on Netflix that like people loved? Black Mirror, I guess. Uh, a Stranger yes. Thing. Oh yeah, true. But I don't even watch that. Like, is it good? You know. Yeah, again, it, the audience, it depends. Like, there are certain audiences that do like that, right? That's why it is quite popular. Yeah, it's uh, weird. It's weird when you think, like, anything that pushes. See, like, if you push people's idea of the way they think about the world, you risk losing them because nobody likes to have their ideas challenged, right? So, like, I guess with Stranger Things, it's like, let's just give you a fun story, you know? But, like, Westworld, it was really making you think, and people didn't like that, you know? Yeah, sometimes you kind of have to do both if you really want to. Like, you, if you do want to make a good story or make people think, but in order to bring other people in it, you need to kind of make it entertaining as well. Right, so so you're, you're just going to be like, your market is only going to be um, limited. You're, you're going to limit your market if you don't make it accessible to other yeah. people. Yeah, yeah. Actually, you know, the thing about that, I wonder if that's why Joe Rogan got so popular because, like, he has such a wide variety of guests that, like, people will just tune in to see that specific guest, you know, whether it be, like, yeah. a doctor and you're like, okay, I don't like the doctor, I like the comedian. Okay, I don't like the comedians, I like the actors. I don't like the actors, yeah. like the MMA fighters. You know, like, he has different avenues from which people can pull, you know, their... Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but not again. Not many shows can do that. Well, he's not really a show. He's like a talk show. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, no, I, I get what you're saying. Yeah, it sucks. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> they're they're far and few between where there are good shows, but that again, again, that's why it's like it's so hard for me to watch a show because. In order to invest, unless it's a documentary, right? But like an actual TV yeah. show, like fiction for me, it's so hard to watch because the story's got to be so good that, you know, I don't care about learning at that point. You know what I'm saying? Because like I like to watch things that like are educational, I would say. But like Westworld to me was like the entertaining value was there to keep my attention. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But again, few and far between. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. But I guess on the whole, uh, to summarize, definitely check out season one. You'll have your mind blown. Uh, season two, the samurais are probably the coolest part of that <laughs> whole thing. But that was only like two episodes. And then season three, just just take a hard pass and switch switch your series. Yeah, you're gonna watch something else. <laughs> yeah, yeah, cool. Um, I'm a little sad that we can't watch like movies anymore because we're like lacking on those movie reviews. Because I was gonna say, oh, you know, is there anything coming out soon that we could review? But no, right? Stupid COVID. I mean, I I really think that they should look into you know just doing those releases on either whatever Netflix or whatever platforms that they want. Oh, those put movies. It out yeah. Yeah. Some of them are like some of them are going direct, but like the really big blockbuster ones, they're pushing it all until next year. Yeah, I know. That's what's so sad for me. I'm like, but I mean, what was really good was like Tenet is staying, so that's good. Is it? I think so. Is isn't it? I, I saw something like Tenet's going to be the first blockbuster for COVID. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be like the the COVID blockbuster. 
I mean, I've been waiting for a long time for another Christopher Nolan movie. So if it if they push it another year, that's uh, again I have to wait another year for him. But like, c- could like what? All right, let's say they open up stores now, uh, open up theaters, open up theaters. But there's nothing yeah. to watch. You know what I mean? So it's like, so what's the point of having them open? Even if they do open them, they can't even have them be full, right? You need to create, like, the seating has to be social distancing. So, so totally, like, totally. But, but, but aside from... Like, on demand as well. True, true, to, totally, totally. But, but aside from that, like, let's mm-hmm. say COVID is totally wiped out and then movie theaters open again. Why would you go to the movie theater? Like, what's going to come out? You know what I mean? Well, yeah, yeah, I, I know what you mean. Like, yeah, but yeah, I don't know. There's um, what what happened to Mulan? Remember, I was like, I was so stoked for that movie, and then I think, I think it got released in China. Uh, I don't know. Uh, it was supposed to come out. Is it supposed to come out in May? Yeah, yeah. That's why I was like, oh, too bad. And they pushed it to next year. Oh, so. that's brutal. I'm pretty sure they pushed it next year. But like, I mean, a lot. Like Black Widow that was supposed to come out. Let's game. Pushed to, to when? To when? Sorry. I'm not sure if it's going to be end of this year or next year. Like, like they're, they've been like playing around with the dates. I don't think anything's really set in stone for the dates. Okay. So. Because they could change it if, they, if things do get opened up and everything's fine. Right, right. They could rush the release, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, they'll, they'll know like they can plan out the actual times when or you know actually set up the dates for when they can release them right 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 it's it's interesting to think like how how um fragile our society is from this like just just to see like oh no movies this year you know (laughs) like something that that's become a staple yearly like it's just vanished because of this whole like covid crisis but you know so today Oh, when we're recording this, it's a Saturday. So today they're doing the UFC fights. Yeah. So the, there's an actual UFC fight going on. And um, I think this one's like on a like an Indian reservation or like a casino. That's no, a casino. It's in a casino that's allowing for it for some reason. Mm-hmm. Like legalities are allowing it. Um, but one of the fighters tested positive for COVID. Oh, really? Yeah. How whack is that? They did the weigh-ins yesterday, and then because they're testing everyone, right? So one of the fighters, one of the main card fighters, tested positive for COVID. Main card? Main card. Oh, damn. I know, right? That's crazy, bro. Because it's like... What's going to happen with that fight? That's canceled, I guess? uh, No, I think they have, like, other fighters... Oh, right. Like, uh, under the wing. Like, it's like... um, Right. Just in case someone drops out then they'll just switch the fighter so they'll just have to fight a different guy (laughs) i I know but that's crazy though right because it's like so all the other fighters are probably freaking out right now they're like can i even fight like did i come into contact with that other fighter oh what do i do Mm -hmm. you know right 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 yeah yeah well they're all watching there i think a lot of the sports stuff is watching to see what happens with the ufc oh really eh? because they're the only one that's doing it right right totally totally he, Dana White's taking the risk, and someone has to do it. True, true, totally, right. totally. And it's funny because it's like, but I mean, this could actually put UFC in the biggest spotlight possible because UFC was already popular. It was like gaining in popularity, but like it wasn't like yeah. a household thing, you know. But now it might be the only thing people watch, right? Because the only thing that's and actually. I think it's, and I think people, I mean, people have been just staying at home, so. And there's no, no sports to watch, nothing. And here comes UFC. I think there will be a huge number of people watching this. Yeah, I, Just... I agree. I agree. And you can create like a huge um, new market for them. Yeah. Yeah. The, um, the, then after, there, after there's this. There's a ton of. Sorry, yeah. sorry. Sorry. There's a ton of free marketing around it too, right? So. Right. Yeah, totally, totally. Yeah, yeah. Because like what else are other people going to pick up on? What other sports networks are going to pick up on? You know? Yeah. The, um, the, after this one, they're going to the fight island, so like purchase an island, and they're gonna fight on it. Right. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Um, oh, I was gonna see something else. Fight island, UFC. Yeah, I don't know. I I lost that last uh, that last thought, but yeah, 
that's that's crazy that he tested positive for COVID because then it's like it kind of like like you you kind of plan for all the worst case scenarios, but then like your worst case scenario could potentially you know what I mean like everyone's like yeah. oh this is a stupid idea don't do this don't do this don't do this if it goes off <laughs> without a hitch people are like oh what a genius but now it's like but if this one fighter gave it to all the other fighters right you know that it's yeah. like oh this was the stupidest disaster like we all knew this wasn't you know blah 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 mm-hmm. yeah yeah well, we'll see. I mean people want entertainment people I mean, this will also get people to stay home and watch it from home, right? So, True, too. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. But he's taking the risk, yeah. Yeah, solid risk. And it's already off to a bad start with that one fighter <laughs> testing positive. And a main card <laughs> fighter, too, which is even worse. Because, uh, like, all eyes are on that main card, right? So it's like, ooh. Right. Right. Mm, yeah. 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 All right. Well, so, we'll hopefully, mm-hmm. um, hopefully this all gets resolved soon and we start pumping out more entertainment yeah or we might just have to result to like netflix movie reviews have you watched extraction yet no i haven't no. hey i watched the first like 20 minutes and i'm like oh my god this is amazing but like i got so busy i just couldn't watch it i'm trying to finish it today but yeah mm. did you finish the game no uh... see even there i'm like just so <laughs> busy i'm like it's sort of like the the thing that's like really irritating, like I really want to do these things, like from an entertainment perspective, like play the game or like um, right. watch this movie. But then like an idea will pop up in my head, and I'm like, okay, I gotta go chase this idea for a bit. Mm-hmm. You know, and then the day's done, and you're like, ah, oh, okay, I'll try again tomorrow. Right. But, I don't know. I I, yeah. I haven't felt the energy. Like I need to be in the right mindset to start. Final Fantasy Seven. Yeah. I feel like it's one of those I, things that you gotta play when you're here. I guess so. But, like, I want to play a game, but I don't, like, that's not. Like, up uh, on your list. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, I feel you, I feel you. For something else. And, like, I wanted to get the the Jedi Fallen Order, but then they had a sale, but then now the sale is gone. So I'm like, I I don't feel like buying that. Yeah, 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 yeah. no, no. (laughs) You don't want to pay full price right now. Yeah. So I'll have to look at something else. (laughs) Yeah, I I feel like, um, Final Fantasy Seven is one of those things that you gotta play on your your setup, you know, mm-hmm. the, the one you have here versus the one you got there, because it's like it's so immersive and like I feel like you're gonna spend a lot of time in that world, you know. Right. So like right. you don't have your headphones there, you know. Oh yeah, yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like yeah, it's it's mm. it's a really good one, but yeah, no, I agree with you. It's it's tough times. It's weird how like where people are having a hard time to to like find a way to entertain themselves, you know, <laughs> like what a luxury, right. you know, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. All right. Till next. Oh, I actually know a final thing about positive note for COVID, but also kind of freaky. So like, um, in my cousin's hometown in the Philippines, they, everything opened up again. So they're, they're cool with COVID. Yeah. Okay. But the only bad thing is because I was like, oh, you only have three cases there. And they're like, yeah, but we also don't have the equipment really to test. So it's sort of yeah. like, they're like, yeah, we're good. We're good. <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean? It's like, it's a little sketchy, but, but also. But you really, but also like over there, and you really can't shut down the economy for too long. Yeah, totally. Yeah, I yeah, know for sure. Because like, like they already have oh, nothing. The, yeah, and there's no government subsidies or nothing so yeah you you know that that's one of the things about like international travel that i find so important just to see how other people live and you stop you stop taking the way you live for granted you know like with this whole like we're all at home but like no they actually should open up because like you said like the subsidies just aren't gonna come yeah 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 all right till next week uh, take it easy, Vish. Uh, this episode sponsored by ZenRealClothingCo.com. Use SG Podcast on checkout for 20% off select items. And be sure to check out the free radio playlist on Spotify, ZenReal Radio, ZenRealClothingCo.com. Take it easy, Vish. Yep. Peace. Bye.